What is up down and sideways, you absolutely love it. Individuals, we are back. It's League Unlocked. Eric and Mark here with you, booties, for what we are dubbing Week Seven of the Global Power Rankings. As we're wrapping up splits in the LEC, we're starting new splits or parts of the LPL. It continues to be impossible to keep track of which region is at which part of the season. But that's not the task for today. Today, today's task is to look through the teams around the world try to sort them into some sort of order some type of established setting for you to understand where they are in the world and what type of power they are bringing in before we get to the final big dance at the end of the year time to dive into these global power rankings and we begin in that 20 spot with a squad that uh you could put them at 20. You're putting FPX at 21, probably, when you're talking about anyone's legend who five losses in a row now. Okay, they took a game this weekend, but you're talking about seeing an eighth grader who's the top dog dominating everybody. He went into high school now, and you're you're well at the bottom of the barrel. The tiny fish now is AL. Yeah, the big fish in a small pond all of a sudden becomes the little fish big pond when you're stepping up into the big leagues of the LPL against the heaviest hitters that you can't have. We've unfortunately learned that anyone's legend is a peewee baseball champion. That seems to be the way for this squad. It's been it's been trouble after trouble after trouble, and it's been very little. There have been little i want to acknowledge that signs of life glimpses of the anyone's legend that did earn their way into this territory of the lpl but since then it has been brutal for this anyone's legend squad they certainly haven't been able to generate anywhere close to enough traction in the series to be really be at that competitive point with the rest of these top tier squads in the lpl and it only gets uh rougher for anyone's legend yeah, but somehow they're on the same round uh, as JDG in these playoffs, and we'll get to JDG later on in this list. But opposite side of anyone's legend, how about a little praise for Fear X, who I did not have on the bingo card ever showing up on top 20 here, but they've quietly put together a four-series win streak. Yes, most of them against some of the lower-tier teams, but they have absolutely leveled up over the last couple weeks. Yes, and I think that this is a proper acknowledgement of that, what we have seen from Firex. We had talked so many times uh, with them and about the you know wild schedule they've had here or there that has r run through an absolute gauntlet. Not the case this split. It is more so a regular spaced out type of schedule. And to be able to then hit a hot streak like they have here and weather it through good teams, bad teams, didn't matter. Fear X has been putting those results in the W column for them and picking it up. You like to see that for this team, and especially for the LCK, it adds to that picture around that last playoff spot and how competitive it can be for that entry point. And Fox has clearly booted Kwangdong out of that spot. Four in a row for them, four losses in a row for KDF, which is why they're finding themselves on this list. Uh, obviously, K Corp, tragically, we're not even going to see them at season finals so maybe some other eu team's going to come steal this spot from them psg didn't actually play but they're sitting pretty waiting for their opponent in playoffs k corp you're still feeling okay about even though they lost then we get to the mess that was finals weekend in the lec bds get bumped down and fanatic oh man if you were grading pre-15 minutes I'd be ready to put Fnatic into the top 10, but after that, the disaster class of throws in all three matches against G2, they had to be punished by sliding down. It is a number, numero uno example of why the game doesn't end just after 15 minutes out of nowhere, because you do need to show that you can close things out. You have those capabilities. You are able to keep the sheet clean enough at those important moments to get it through the door. That was not the case for Fnatic. They're getting stuck. They're the guy, you know, trying to, how do I get this couch through? Trying to just ram it in straight. And it's like, bro, diagonal. Yeah, you gotta put on this angle and get it fit. But through. they tried the same way three times in a row. I don't know what's wrong with this door frame, man. No, don't, don't let them play Tetris anytime soon. And don't let them play League of Legends against G2 anytime soon seems to be the way for Fnatic. 
again, a mental block appears just, you know, just recently after you came over the hurdle of that mental block against G2 in a best of five series to have such a drop, to have such a difference in clearly of what you know how to do when the pressure, when the stakes are for this championship, for this final, you were completely gapped by G2 in every role, in every aspect of having that clutch factor, having that winning essence that we know the greatest teams do have. And again, shot at redemption in these season finals, you've got to be even hungrier, even more disappointed if you're the fanatic players. Case in point, we've seen multiple guys on the squad talking about, I don't know how we lost these games. So absolutely, they're going to be looking for a bounce back. We've already gotten a bounce back from a squad like KT Rolster, who I'm calling it their statement series win of the season, matching up against a absolutely roaring Hanwha Life that was 10 and 2 coming into the matchup and KT they play a competitive game 3 series but they get it done in that third and decisive game deft on a pick like Jin that we're not accustomed to seeing BDD popping off picking up two MVPs and a penta Oh man KT is like that guy that you see early at the party you're like you're done you're over no way you're not going to make it to midnight we're not seeing you buddy you get to midnight He's the life of the party. He's found that second win. It's all of a sudden, let's go time. KT Rolster, they find it when they needed it most. They certainly had to get a signature win in the LCK and one that was going to be of the performance level that vaults them back into that conversation, puts you back up and, you know, closer to the tier of the T1 DK Hanwha life area of the LCK and further away from the Kwangdong Freaks and the Fear X type of territory of the LCK. This was a very important win for KT. The way that they did it, as you laid out, BDD, I don't think we've talked necessarily enough about how strong he has been for this KT Rolster team, how consistent he has been able to be for them as a leader, because we have so many of these other figures in the LCK. We're talking about Showmaker. We're talking about Faker. We're talking about Chovy with Gen G. BDD gets a bit lost in that shuffle, but make no mistake, absolutely a key contributor and one getting it done for KT Rolster at this point. 29 kills for him across this three-game set, almost averaging 10 a game. So, yeah, it's a hell of a series uh, for him, especially matching up against a guy like Zekka. Weibo also continuing their climb. What a resurgence and saving kind of this season that we've seen out of them. It was a 2-0 against FPX, 2-0 against LGD. We've already seen them be competitive against BLG. Xiaohu finding his spring form late in summer, huh? Did not have this one in the cards, especially about how abysmal the performances of Weibo looked before this turnaround and, it's, and even more so. Oh, lackluster the performances were from Xiaohu specifically. For that Weibo team at that point, we talked about how much that he was going to be and had to be one of the engines that was truly driving and putting in serious mileage for this Weibo squad. Now, this is it. You are seeing it. He's got the optimal fuel in the tank, and it is Weibo pushing forward in the LPL. Still holding on. Still a little bit of a reservation, needing to see this when it truly matters the most. For Weibo to be able to show up, they still have, a, of course, a little bit of that fraud label when you're starting to enter into territories where there is a lot more pressure, there is a lot more at stake. That is going to be where we need to see Weibo perform at this reestablished level again. Yeah, we'll see when they're actually favorites in a matchup as we head into playoffs, how they handle that. Uh, two Western teams to wrap up 20 to 11 G2 we've kind of touched on. Yes, they get bumped up. They had no business winning a lot of these games and were by no means clean. And how about now? We've got the first place LEC team and the third place LCS team back-to-back -back spots on this list. And honestly, that just feels like where these regions are right now. The problem is I know that's going to come to bite me in the behind behind later. There's no way that it ends up finishing the year in that type of situation. But right now, I, it's completely justified to me where these teams are and where they have been forming and where you can slot them into a list like this. G2, I think there is, you know, kind of a half C thumbs up about Broken Blade. I think that he was, uh, you know, 
yes, part of the problems at time in that series, but certainly one of the big reasons why they were able to dig themselves out of some of those positions that Fnatic had put themselves in in the series. And then you look as well for this G2 team. I want to talk about Yike and Mickey in the jungle, because even when things are going bad, just like that, they can counter and take over and, and jump on an attack opportunity for G2 and look so good doing so and, and getting it all set up. And of course, the consistent, the number one presence for G2, Caps. Not a great series from him individually, but also certainly there and clutch when it mattered the most and having that winning edge, that, you know, just that je ne sais quoi type of thing, that unspeakable essence that is, that winners know how to take control of a situation when it is up for grabs. And you saw that with Caps and G2, so that is still in their favor. The LCS train rolls, though, or continues ahead of EU into this top 10 as it's still Cloud9 sitting pretty in that 10 spot. JDG gets a bump down to 9 now, and you might say, but JDG hasn't looked great. They've lost three series in a row. The saving grace as to why they're still ahead of Cloud9 is those three series that they've lost have been to Top Esports, LNG, and BLG, well, Cloud9's beaten up on energy, so the level of competition is a little bit different. Now, it is also important to mention in those series, which are obviously at a different level of competition, and that's why you're being a little bit more lenient towards a squad uh, here. But the big important thing is to check in on the performance of Sheer in the top side for JDG, because him getting that starting role was a very important thing, I think, for the team and where the trajectory can go this year we've also quickly realized that he has got a heck of a task on his on his plate ahead of him against these top tier squads of the lpl and the top laners that they present and the type of challenges that are going to be there i think through that three game stretch this has been about as rough as it has looked individually for sheer not that it's been so so bad but he certainly has been exposed quite a bit and certainly been a weak point that the other teams have pressured against jdg that's something that is only going to be increasing as you get up into this uh, more important games in the lpl need to see that be something that is weathered a little bit better for this jdg squad and again really slumping at kind of the worst time against that again tough competition but now they only get one buy one series buy uh, in the LPL. They're at the same spot as anyone's legend. They're behind Weibo. This is a squad that for so long we were talking about as the consensus at worst third best team in the LPL. Yeah, and so to lose really that stranglehold, that grasp on that situation in the LPL and to have it be as drastic as you laid out there being in the same situation as anyone's legend being passed by Weibo Gaming, the frauds themselves passing you? Crazy to think that that's where we are with JDG, but they certainly have an uphill climb. Get back into that top tier section of the OPO. Been a little bit too reliant on Ruler lately, it feels like, has that JDG squad. Uh, TL and LNG both staying put in that 8-7 spot. I was, I penciled in multiple times, TL at 7, LNG at 8, and went back and forth because Team Liquid, just another absolute dominant showing, but it's against Immortals. But LNG needed three games a couple of times to win their last two series, so I would honestly be able to accept Team Liquid a spot ahead at 7. I know it's crazy. I'll take them both. I'll take them both. It's as simple as I'm going to go with it because I think that this is, je this is really... No, these two numbers are where these two teams belong. Take it either way. This is where you are finding yourself in the global power rankings, given the situations that you have shown through us. Team Liquid, it's all business. It's all business and it's all good for them right now so far in the LCS, what they've been able to do. You're getting APA, the top tier performances you want from him. Jan is clearly showing himself to be, I think right now, the best ADC in the LCS. And I say that, knowing that Cloud9 have been an improved version of Cloud9 and Berserker has been online this split and has been a contributing factor for them as well. But I think the difference is just, there's got to be going in favor of Team Liquid right now. What we have seen, the strides, the growth that from the young star core pieces for Team Liquid, combined with that veteran presence that they have with players like Impact and Core JJ and of course, General Empty in the jungle, 
this is a Team Liquid squad that I am believing more and more in every weekend. I alluded this to this in a, a video the other day, but honestly, you do a first team all pro list right now. It's probably all Team Liquid, maybe Blabber over Umpty, but at least three, four of the guys you're talking about TL being best in their role so far in slump summer. So yeah, absolutely have carried that momentum over from MSI. Last one on this 10 to 6 board kind of goes hand in hand with number five on that list. And that is because, of course, T1 and D Plus had that head to head throwdown showdown. It went the distance to three games. Maybe wouldn't have if there wasn't a bit of a miracle Baron steal out of Mr. Lucid on the Maokai, but this was definitely a bounce back series that T1 desperately needed. Which we need to have a conversation with uh, Guma about being a taxi for <laughs> Lucid at that point in game one to find a miraculous Baron steal that, yes, it does spiral into D plus Kia finding that first game win in the series but it is T1 that weather the storm. They get that bounce back in game two and they get full control in game three to take the series. Ousting D plus Kia from the top five a VIP lounge. And once again, finding their ID saying, ah, there it is. Welcome back, Mr. T1. Here you are in the VIP. And, you know, bit of a, a level up uh, to start their comeback, you know, they. One against KT, needed three games, close series. More dominant against DRX, and game three was pretty convincing fashion. Maybe the cleanest gin performance we've seen out of anybody in summer in that third game. Yes, yes it was, and it was certainly one that had me as a gin fan very happy to see, and one that I know Gumayushi and, you know, this gin pick for him specifically with T1. It's had some bad moments in the past. It has had some of the worst moments, actually, in T1's recent history when you go back and look at it and what has happened through it. But you look at the way that he has individually performed and what he has done since those moments, this is a champion that I do have confidence and faith in Gumayushi pulling out for T1, even if it is a little bit of a different flavor. And throughout this series, even though there were some suspect positioning errors out of Faker, uh, he was... Could, consistently like 20 cs over showmaker in pretty much all three of these games I, I mean it's also really unfair and i understand that this is the situation of a game one he's pretty solid all actually really good i think throughout the large parts of this game and once things start going really south 14-1 and have gone more so into that momentum for d plus kia that's where you get unfortunate and you get hit by the seismic shove at dragon pit and then everything spirals out from that point onwards for T1 without the power of that Corky in that type of position. Corky got to that type of position in the other games for T1, for Faker, and it was very controlled for them. Really good to see from T1, this type of bounce back, this type of control, this type of effort in a series against D plus Kia. Again, talking so much about this burnout, where we're going to see the full power of T1 still up in the air for me. But at the very least, to be able to dial up a series like this, to dig down and get one against D plus Kia at this point and the form that they had been showing in the LCK is a good sign for this T1 squad. Just ahead of them, obviously Hanwa won that head-to-head -head against T1 back-to-back, -to -back, so deserving to be ahead. We alluded to that KT series loss. That's more KT leveling up than Hanwa playing super poorly, especially how good they've looked lately. So still very happy with them. But there's not much room for error when Top Esports continues to roll. Remember when they were 0-2 and two and we started panicking? Well, all they did was rally off six straight series wins to clinch that third spot in the LPL. Holy moly, they are serious about emerging from the LPL as the top option. That's what they want to do. That type of performances can lay it out for you quickly on Hanwha Life, though. Looking at that series with KT Rolster, what type of monkey pod did Doran use up that he could be Zeus's father, only to get beat down by Perfect on the side of KT, of the, the rookie making his revenge in that series for the rest of the LCK? But top esports have been certainly getting their revenge on the rest of the LPL after that sluggish start to this next section, the summer uh, split type of thing for the LPL. They have certainly been on fire, and, and you know who's been on fire? Your man Tian in the jungle has had control of things. It might not be 
the craziest numbers individually when you're looking at them. But watch the games. Watch his impact when he does factor into what's going on in top side, what's happening in mid lane. How how are you getting Jackie Love ahead? These type of things. He has absolutely got his fingerprints all over the success for top esports. And doing it head to head, gapping Kanavi himself in the latest series for TES, who we're always talking about as one of, if not the premier jungler in the LPL. Uh, it's another week where BLG and Gen G just exchange embarrassments of the opposition. Latest for BLG, a 21 and zero kill game for Mr. Knight's Lucian. Capping it off with the pentakill. Thank you to Mr. Care and Genji. Maybe not as dramatic, but another dominant win for them. But BLG with Jun looks even more terrifying. Holy moly. By Jun, I mean where, Wei. Sorry, Jun. Yeah, where, where do we factor in this VIP room? We gotta start allocating certain funds. We gotta start raising to get a separate section of the VIP, the ultra VIP. Because we're not just one member ultra VIP, that doesn't work out. Two members ultra VIP, that can work out right now. And we are seeing that with the performances from BLG and Gen G. Talked about them. Gen G, very much just great and excellent level and control and what they had and always showing that skill is where you went through with them this week. But on the other side, BLG and what we have seen from them and the explosiveness of Mr. Knight in the mid lane. That has got to be the story that we are talking about. How would you like 21 kills Dude. for yourself? Yeah, uh, just, he was laughing basically from the first kill of the game to the very end uh, in that matchup against FPX. But yeah, both of these squads just cut above everyone else. I don't remember seeing two more dominant top seeds from their respective region where you'd be happy calling either of them favorites for a world championship, but right now we are blessed to have two teams that have been so consistently at the top for the entirety of 2024, but that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you wonderful people. As always, thanks for hanging out, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.